and I was awful proud. I was commissioned 30 years, and we did a lot of rock work. You can see it. It wasn't there when I came in. But I thought it was going to last forever. <laughs> the rocks will, not the water. Texas was once home to thousands of springs. But over the last century, the springs that have brought people here for millennia have been disappearing. This is the story of one of those springs. In a desert hugely rich with oil, Fort Stockton was famous for its water. But after World War II, the springs that had flowed for thousands of years suddenly began to dry. You can see the old spring is still the same, see it? With the, with the cage around it. The water that would have flowed from Comanche Springs was being taken out of the ground upstream by pumps now capable of bringing up millions of gallons of water a day. Pumps like those on the Williams farm. We've been farming here on and off for 70 years. Jeff Williams is the grandson of one of the farmers whose pumping claimed the water that would have flowed to Comanche Springs. We have 42 wells, we have 30, but we use 32 of them during the growing season. That's about 35 million gallons a day. We're the largest permit holder of water in this region. And in Texas alone, I mean in general, other than municipalities, we have the largest permit held by one person. Grandfather came out and said, you know, if we drill water wells here, you can farm, irrigate it. Where the fight came was when they started irrigating out here, dried up the springs, there's not as much water over there. All the big water is right here. The legacy of Comanche Springs ripples far beyond Fort Stockton. A lawsuit filed by the farmers whose lands were dried up by upstream pumpers led to a historic decision. Landowners have the right to pump the groundwater under their property, even if it means drying up the water of someone else's. The concept, known as the rule of capture, still reigns in parts of Texas. Fort Stockton is no longer known as the Spring City of Texas. I can understand, to a certain extent, some of the, the fallout. Would I like to have been downstream and the water dried up on my farm? No, I would have been mad too. I've been here long enough and I've, I've got enough love of the land that I, I can understand both sides of the deal, but the rule of capture was the rule of capture. Of the thousands of springs known to have existed in Texas, only a handful are legally protected from groundwater pumping. Will the rest share the same fate as Comanche Springs? And if not, how can we keep them flowing?